This problem is related to the acceptance sampling. Now this company it says that they are producing a product with zero defect policy. Now it's not that all the products are produced zero defects. Well, some companies, if you're only making screws, um, cell phones, so screws are typically follows that cell phone, mostly any electronics products typically follows a zero defect policies. So in that case, what they are saying is the acceptance number uh, C is zero. And then it says the manufacturer and customer tolerates about uh, 0.035%. So acceptable quality limit for the manufacturer is 0.035%. And then rejectable quality limit for the customer is given 2%. So these are the numbers. It, uh, now typical consumer and producer risk values. So consumer uh, risk which is beta. Consumer risk is beta. Check this definition is one of the earlier videos which is 0.1 all the time or 10%. And then the producer risk, which is alpha, is 0.05%. So I have calculated this sample size. One is based on the producer risk. I have calculated it, um, this um, uh, 146. And based on consumer, I have calculated 115. So if you want to satisfy both of them, meet both of their criteria, you need to inspect 146. Uh, pieces of that second question is asking kill make a single sampling operating characteristics curve this is i have prepared that already so you can check that if it doesn't look like this check the video on how to make single sampling operating characteristics curves next question was asking make a double sampling plan this is how mine looks it should look like your like this if it doesn't check that how to create a double sampling plan so this is just how to you can check the other videos on how to do that so i'm not going to show it again um, question number uh, four is the one i want to discuss so what it says do you really get any benefit by doing double sampling plan and we can see that in double sampling you actually inspect um, uh, almost twice more products so first time you inspected some um, maybe 155 of them second time you are inspecting another um, more than 255 so it's a lot of inspection does that really add much benefit to your does that add any profit to it so that's what this question is asking now as you can see that uh, this axis is the the y axis is the acceptance axis so the more product you accept uh, then as a manufacturer is good for you so as you can see it, this curve shifted towards the um, y direction so it's going up direction meaning that you are accepting more accepting more products now so you will be sending more products to the market so you are actually as a manufacturer you are minimizing your risk so you are reducing the alpha value so basically you are minimizing uh, the risk number for you now here is the thing when you accept more product that means you send it to the market and then your customer take the risk so you decrease the alpha by the sacrifice of increasing the beta so let me explain that so if you go back to that problem it gives you the tolerance value so your um, your tolerance your customer tolerance uh, I think that's a type it should be 0 0.035 percent I think let me check my Excel yeah 0 0.035 percent so it gives you these values so a QL value is given the acceptable quality limit which is associated with alpha is given 0 0.035 percent uh, once again alpha is 0 0.05 if, 
Now, if you if you look at this AQL value, let's say this is the line where you got this AQL value. So previously, assume that this is 95% line. So your alpha value was about 0 0.05. Now your values went down to even less. So maybe that's a 3%. So your alpha reduced to 0.03%. So previously you took 5% risk. Now you are only taking 3% risk. So that's a good for you. Now we don't know about that. Let's check the beta. So beta is 2%. The RQ rejectable quality is given 2%. However, beta is always 10% fixed or 0.1. So for the rejectable quality 2%, this is where you are, that's 2% RQ, that's AQL was given 0.035%. Uh, now if you extend the line vertically there, so you get this about 18% I would say, this one probably around 22% maybe so let's that is 18% let's say that is 22% so your consumer risk increases if this is the acceptance y axis is the acceptance that means that's your consumer risk so you accept a product send it to the market then your producer gets it so your producer risk beta in this case particular case it was not point one it was based beta in this case the way this plan was made so your pro producer consumer risk beta which was 18 percent um, at the beginning for the single sampling plant now this blue curve is the single sampling uh, plant this orange curve is the uh, double sampling one so as you can see your consumer risk went from 18 percent to 22 percent so their risk increases by four percent so you, your consumer will get a little bit more uh, defective products now now remember one thing by doing sampling you're not really reducing or decreasing or increasing any product quality if there is 10 percent defective in that lot whether you, if you accept it your customer will get that so you're not you know it's not gonna um, if a screw is bad, it's bad. It's not going to make uh, it's better just by doing sampling. By sampling, you're just trying to minimize the risk for both and your consumers. So if you put too much consumer risk, your consumer will go another place, buy another set of screw not from your company. So here, that increases by 4%. Your risk decreases by about 2%. So from 0 0.05 to 0 0.03. So it depends on you whether you want to do that or not. However, if you look at the increase in uh, product that will be accepted is this much. Not a huge gain though. Now if you do a, if we would do not just double sampling, if we do a third sampling, the graph would be even closer than that. In a fourth sampling plan, it would be even closer, so the gap will be minimized. And a lot of time, this double sampling plan does not really make any sense. Um, if you think about the garments product manufacturer in some country, where they get paid only one cent per one shirt, uh, making one shirt, and then they cannot even sometimes do double sampling because it just even that one cent is it, it doesn't add much benefit to it however it costs a lot to inspect another 255 so it depends on the product too if you produce some product that is very expensive you may want to in inspect more so the question that is asking does that thing worthy in this case uh, yes or no just you know have the discussion ready that uh, you in decrease the uh, manufacturer risk by the increase of the producer risk you're going to be selling more products but you're not sure you want to send all this product to the market where was inherently some problem so double sampling plan is more i would say uh, theoretical in nature than the actual application of it now the last question is asking explain all this i have a video on that so check that video how to explain these um, definitions.